A Stirling engine can take on various forms, but they all work by taking advantage of heat differentials. Today we're going to look at a beta type Stirling engine. So we start with a piston cylinder. One side we make hot, the other side we make cold. And we introduce a couple pistons. This piston at the back is called the power piston. It controls the overall volume of gas in the cylinder. This one is called the displacer piston. It controls where in the cylinder the gas is. Then all we have to do is hook these guys up to a flywheel. They're going to oscillate back and forth at the same frequency, but they'll be out of phase with each other. So if our flywheel is spinning this way, our displacer piston is always going to be a little bit ahead of our power piston. Now, to get a better idea of what this looks like in motion, I've taken apart this Stirling engine. So it doesn't have a cylinder anymore. Instead, it's got these black lines to show you where the cylinder would be. So we keep this side hot. So any air over here will also be hot. Meanwhile, we keep this side cold. So any air over here is going to be cold. Now, when this displacer piston here is on the right, there's no space for air over here. So all the air has to be over here, where it'll be hot. When the displacer is over here, there isn't as much room for air on this side, so a lot of the air is going to move over into this area of the piston, which is going to be cold. We'll start our cycle here, with a lot of hot air on this side of the cylinder. The hot air is going to want to expand and increase the overall size of the chamber. It's going to push the power piston out. But by pushing the power piston out, it's also pushed some of the hot air over onto the cold side. So now, the chamber is going to want to contract, and it's going to pull the power piston back in. Once again, though, this closes off the volume on the cold side, so all the air is on the hot side. The hot air then expands again. Then the cold air contracts. The hot air expands. These flywheels over here have a high moment of inertia. So they keep us spinning when we're right in between. That's important because there are points in the cycle where we're not being pushed either way. But because these flywheels are already spinning, they're going to keep us going through the points where there's no pressure. Here we have that same Stirling engine, but with its piston on. Over here you can see a heat sink that keeps this side of the cylinder cool. We're going to manually heat this side to run this engine. It's going to keep going until the temperature here matches the temperature here. So once it starts to die, I can give it a quick boost by heating this back up again. Now we're going to see what happens when we run that cycle in reverse. Now if we run this in the same direction that we did when we were heating it up, we'll start by compressing the gas. And as we compress it, the displacer is over here, so all the gas is on this side. Since we've compressed the gas, it's hot, and since it's over here, this side gets hot. Next we expand the gas. 
Now the displacer is over here, and all the expanded gas must be over here. Expanded gas wants to be cold, so this side gets cold. And then we repeat, compressing the gas while it's on this side, and expanding the gas while it's on this side. If we run it in reverse then, we compress all the gas when it's over on this side, heating up that side. And we expand all the gas when it's on this side, making this side the cold side. Compress to the left, expand to the right. we find we can easily drop below room temperature and create a temperature differential. This side is now cold. Even though the piston is being driven in the same direction as when we heated it, the end point is getting colder. If we change the direction, we heat it up pretty quickly. And here we have another Stirling engine. This one's a fan. It has a much smaller piston. We'll apply our energy for heat on the bottom, and the top will be the cold side. You can see this piston is the power piston, increasing the overall volume of the gas in the chamber, while this piston is the displacer. And that sponge moving up and down changes where in the chamber the air is. So to supply heat, we'll put it on this hot plate. and it's finally hot enough to overcome friction. And of course it keeps spinning even after we've taken it away from the hot plate because the bottom is still pretty warm. 